Good morning. Welcome to the B.F. Anderson Technical Report for October the 3rd. You know, one of the best books ever written on the stock market was written by Gerald Loeb. The title of the book tells the story. It's called The Battle for Investment Survival. And what Loeb really preaches in the book is that there comes times where you have to be defensive with your portfolio, which means cash, that you that you increase your cash, that you sleep better at night because you have a good cash reserve. Basically, what we're seeing right now with the market is somewhat of a breakdown. Now, when it comes to trend following, and we're looking right here at the NASDAQ, you can see here, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later in the video, but we are basically in a trendless market that is now somewhat breaking down. So you can see here that the NASDAQ, as of yesterday, has violated the the short-term or intermediate-term uptrend or even sideways trend. So in, in trend following, we look for two factors. One would be a break of the, uh, of the moving average, and then what we would want to see is that it would hold in here and then rally back above the moving average. Well, that's not the case because this now would become a violation because it has broken the lows that were established last week. Now, on the other indicator, now these indicators, you know, we use some of them in our work and then some of them we just simply observe. Now, this is a very important indicator. This is the 35-week moving average. Now, in order to get a violation of this particular indicator, we have to go two weeks below the 35-week moving average. Now, you can see that this happened last year back in, uh, actually started in September of 2018. And you can see that the market has basically gone nowhere since that, since that break. So we, we came down, we then broke below the 35 week moving average. Week one, we closed below. Week two, we closed below. And then we had the worst December in history and the market declined approximately from here to here. It was about 20%. So we did have, by definition, a bear market in the third quarter of 2019. <clears throat> the advanced decline line, as you can clearly see here, has made a des decisive turn downward. Now we'll talk a little bit more about the advanced decline line later. High low index, number of new highs, new lows, you can see deterioration there. Uh, again, we would just continue to say keep any new buying very light uh, be very careful in here. Now the new lows on the New York Stock Exchange have been really quite sanguine, but yesterday and the day before we did break back above that 40. Yesterday we had 80 new lows, which is a little bit on the high side. Uh, on the long-term indicator, we're still good there. That We're not having uh, any type of uh, bearish cross or what we call a death cross. However, you know, we have pulled back to the upper moving average and the upper moving average has turned up. So let's just keep an eye on this. So far, the long term indicator looks fine. Now on the sentiment readings, we are back in fear, almost into extreme fear. We got down to, to a somewhat neutral reading, but are back up in fear. Now that's kind of a time to be looking around, but not really taking action. Here on the Another long-term indicator, this is the S&P 500. We're using a 200-week moving average. Again, you just have to note, every time you get close to the moving average, it creates a really good buy, buying opportunity. And we have, we have definitely turned down here. On the global Dow, and you can, you can understand what's going on internationally here, you know, the market, the international markets peaked <clears throat> right at the beginning of the year and, uh, excuse me, at the beginning of, of 2018, pretty much moving sideways. Um, you know, a break below this level would be troublesome. Uh, you know, it did this right back here at the, uh, at the end of last year during the bear market that we had, and pretty much has never really recovered and made new highs. The international markets are weak. Now on the value line geometric, <clears throat> this is a very important index to keep an eye on. If you go back through time, you notice that we have a top here in 1998-99. This is uh, 2007, 2008. Then we had a, you know another top here in 2015. 
you know, big drop down. We did rally up, make a new high. And so basically what's happening here, and this is something in technical terms, these levels here, which would be 515, 520, acts as resistance. In other words, it, it, it had trouble breaking through that area. Well, one thing about resistance, it can also act as support. But yesterday, we got down to 50305, so we are breaking down below the, the resistance and support level. Again, caution. <clears throat> now, on the advanced decline line, what I wanted to just kind of mention about the advanced decline line, it's not the absolute number that matters. It's the trend of the line. So at the top here, I've got the S&P 500. I'm going back to 2006, 7, and 8. And if we look at the peak back in 2007, you can see where the market just went into a definite downtrend. Well, so did the advanced decline line. This is, this is the advanced decline line, number of advancers versus decliners. And you can see that it just definitely went into a downtrend and a bear market. So where are we today? Well, you can see where we are today. <clears throat> the the up here this is the S&P you can see it's somewhat turning over rolling over advanced decline line is rolling over actually kind of broke um, you know a support area so basically what's happening here is is and we believe it has a lot to do with what's going on internationally mainly China but what this is causing is it is a lot of cash on the sidelines and we'll mention more about that now the small cap index, this is the S&P 600. Now there was a study done by the American Association of Individual Investors, AAII, that basically said that human behavior has a lot to do with what the market's going to do. And they basically uh, talk about something called patience. And they're saying that they did a study that said that you know the average investor tends to run out of patience when the market either goes down or sideways for 18 months or more. So you can see here with the small caps, they have been basically moving sideways for two years, for 24 months. We're actually in the 25th month. And you can see the peak here uh, that hit last year around September, then we broke down and we have basically moved sideways ever since. So what happens here is, is that you, you, the cash builds up, the cash builds up because investors are throwing the towel in and giving up on the market. This will probably be, the small caps could be one of the most important uh, canaries in the coal mine. If we can see a breakout either way in the small caps, that would give us a good read. Now here's the NASDAQ, same thing. Now the NASDAQ has moved sideways for approximately 15, 16 months. So the reason this study is important is, is that if the average investor gives up at 18 months, how long do these corrections tend to last? Well, I would say about 18 months. So you get into a bear market situation, it, it goes sideways or down for 18 months, everybody throws the towel in, and that's usually when the, when the, when the market turns up. So we're close, we're close. I think we're closer to the end of this correction than we are the beginning of this correction. Now one other thing to note, <clears throat> we're constantly looking for where is going to be the new leadership. And I can tell you, I went through about 500 charts over the weekend, and technology is definitely out. Uh, we're not finding any technology stocks that led this market because technology led us in the first half of the year but have basically given up the ghost at this point. But if you'll notice here, what I've got here is I'm comparing the uh, f financial stocks to the S&P 500 and you can see here since the beginning of eight or the beginning of 2018 the financial stocks meaning the banks and the insurance companies they they have been underperforming cuz this is a relative strength line this is you know when the line's going down the financials are doing worse than the market well you can see here that recently we got somewhat of a breakout now we pulled back again now i think what's important to watch is now down here at the bottom i've got the 10 year yield on the 10-year uh, Treasury note, which is currently 1.596.
So you can see that if interest rates can get back above, and we're saying 1.9%, so if interest rates start to climb, we get above 1.9, and the bank stocks continue to perform, then we're going to. We really think that that's going to be an important sign because you've got to have strength in the banking industry to, to get things going. Now on the watch list, we're just again we're just watching things here. We're looking for any clues that we can find as to where the strength in the market is. We take our total database and we'll rank them by strength, and these are the top five. So here we have a company called Alacos, which is biotechnology. Then we have another company that's involved in the manufacturing of semiconductors. Now this would be somewhat of a technology stock, but as you can see here, as of yesterday, it has broken below the 10-day moving average, which is a break. It's not a violation because the violation would come if we come down into this area. So, so far, you know, it, it's, it's in an uptrend, but it has broken the short-term uptrend. We're just going to have to see what happens. So, and it did it on fairly high volume. Uh, this, interest, this is really an interesting company. It's been on my list for a while. The Medicines Company. They have got a breakthrough technology on lowering LDL cholesterol. And, uh, you know, it's a Nobel Prize winning technology. This is a $4 billion company that has no revenues and no earnings. So it's, it's risky, risky, risky. But if they get FDA approval for this new drug, and they just finished a 3,600 patient study where they reduce cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, by 50% by giving the patient two shots over a 12-month period. However, the, the, the study ran for 18 months, and everything really looks pretty good. Now, they're going to be talking to the American Heart Association in November. So keep an eye on the medicines company. The pattern looks good. It's something we should be really watching. Now, this is another company where we've gotten the break but no violation. This is Pod uh, Insulate Corp. They have a technology for delivering insulin using a pod that attaches to your arm. This is Target, which is retail. Again, they had a real good earnings report. We had a flag formation here that's somewhat rolling over and kind of going into a descending pattern. Again, we got pretty heavy volume on it yesterday. The stock looks okay. So all in all, what we're saying is we've been 15 to 16 months moving sideways on the major indexes. On the small caps, we've been moving sideways for over two years. Is this correction close to ending? Well, we're going to wait. We're going to wait and see what happens. We're looking uh, at, at these indicators to see when we start to get some buy signals, and we're just not getting that right now. So call me if you have any questions. Thank you very much.